This is the BenQ GS50 and this was released about one and a half years ago. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing to see if in 2023, this is still one of the favorite outdoor projectors that you can still buy. I'm upgrading this from my existing BenQ GV30. Going to show you a quick comparison of the specs on this, which I think is a good option for having an upgrade if you do have the GV30 and then also running through all of the different key features which I think could make this a very good outdoor projector to still buy in 2023. Let's see what's inside the box. You have yourself the power brick and plug, the remote control with two AAA batteries, the BenQ HDMI Android TV stick which you will have to insert before you start the setup and a quick start guide. I do like this remote control, it's the same one as my GV30 remote control and this also has inbuilt voice control as well so you can use Google Assistant to do various commands. And because this is a portable projector you get this very nice grey carry case where you can put all of your equipment inside and just take this with you outdoors. I'm going to be testing this outdoors as well because I'm going to be setting this up with my white wall I have in my garden and testing it to see how bright this actually is in both daylight and at night time. So like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I am actually upgrading from my GV30 to the GS50. A few reasons why I was looking for an upgrade because essentially these two were released roughly around the same amount of time so this one came out in September 2021 and this one around October 2021 so it's been almost a year and a half for both of these but essentially there was three main reasons why I wanted to upgrade from my GV30. The GS50 has a higher native resolution so it is 1080p by default and it can support up to 4k. It also has 500 ANSI lumens of brightness which is 200 ANSI lumens higher than the GV30 and also the audio quality so they're both 2.1 channel speakers but this one has two 5 watt speakers inbuilt and an additional subwoofer that gives you just louder bass but on the topic of audio the GS50 has something unique which I really wanted to talk about so let's go ahead and dive into that first and look at the ports but essentially this is not a comparison review between these two projectors because they've been out for a long time now and there's a lot of comparisons already online. So if you do a search for GV30 versus GS50, you'll find a lot of videos, a lot of articles, blogs, etc., covering all of those things. So I won't cover that. The only other wireless portable outdoor projector that I've reviewed in the past is the ViewSonic M2E. I'll have a link in the description if you wanna check that video out. What I will do is cover briefly some of the comparisons between the ViewSonic projector and the GS50 because I've seen a few people asking these questions online and I haven't really seen a detailed comparison review to see which one's better because they do have quite similar specs and if you're in the market looking for a portable outdoor projector in 2023 then hopefully this should give you an idea which one is the preferred option. So let's go ahead and before we do anything else look at the ports and I'll set it up with my projector screen run through some of the settings and everything will be chaptered down below and let's get straight into it. Now I'm just going to run through the design just in case there's anyone that hasn't actually seen the GS50 before. So you've got your lamp there at the front with your sensor. At the bottom you have actually a pop out kickstand so if you press this button you get this little kickstand which can be adjustable on various different levels so if you just press that and bring it in halfway or a quarter of the way it just makes it easier to stand out and maybe elevate it at the right angle for your screen. If you hold it, push it all the way back in, it locks into place. You have yourself a brown leather carry strap just on the left hand side. On the top of the projector, you have a few buttons here, volume, Bluetooth, power. There's a compartment in here. This is where the HDMI Android TV stick goes. It's very simple, you pull it out You've got a compartment to connect the micro USB to the device and then you connect the HDMI inside like so and then you close it up and then you can run through and finish the setup the first time you do it. And you have those tweeters for the speakers on both sides over here as well, as well as the back. You also have the DC input for the power adapter just there. Now let's take a look at the ports. So you have yourself a lock switch, a USB port, HDMI port, a USB-C port, and an audio output there. One thing I like is that the USB-C port, you can actually power this with a power bank if you like to, as long as the power bank gives an output of 45 watts of power, then that should be absolutely fine. So if you wanna extend the internal battery life of this, which has 2.5 hours of internal battery, then you can use a power bank to give you that extra boost. 
One thing I wanted to mention specifically about audio was the HDMI port. This now supports HDMI arc, so you can actually output the sound coming from the projector to a soundbar or a speaker system, which I haven't seen in a lot of the other projector reviews I've done in the past, and I've done a lot of them. This alone warrants me to actually upgrade from my GV30 with the price difference. And I've always been a fan of connecting wired speakers to get the best audio with the minimal latency rather than connecting it via Bluetooth. And not only that, this is upgraded from the HDMI 1.4 port to the HDMI 2.1 port here from my GV30 to the GS50. So very good functionality with the ports. Let's go ahead and set this up and showcase some of the system settings with the Android TV, and then we'll head outside and test it outdoors. Okay, so I've just gone through the setup process. I've loaded up for the first time. I've logged into a few apps, and you can see Android TV by default. You can add a bunch of apps to your favorites. You can download more apps from the Google Play Store, and you guys are familiar with this. One thing I really like about projectors like this, it's very quick and easy to mirror your iPhone using AirPlay. And if you do have an Android phone, then you can use Chromecast. And that was equally as easy to do that as well. Just to show you an example, I'm going to mirror my Google Pixel. So I will go into Screencast. It comes up with BenQ GS50. If I go into Start, there you go. Very quick and easy, and it's very responsive as well. So I really like using this as a wireless projector for showcasing maybe my photos, videos, many different things and playing back things from YouTube, for example. By default, the brightness is set to be auto adjusted, but you can go into the projector settings, make the necessary adjustments. By default, it's set to 50. So even though there's a lot of daylight coming into the room right now, as you can see from my shutters on the right hand side, this isn't the max brightness. So if I go up to the max brightness manually, It may be a little bit hard to see on the video that you are watching, but in person, you will notice a slight difference that it has gone much brighter than it was previously. But you can also choose from some preset picture modes. I've got it set to cinema. This adjusts things like the brightness and the contrast and the vividness of the colors, depending on what content you're watching. So you can go between sports, game, daytime, living room, and you can even set one to something called bright. This is probably going to be used a little bit more outdoors when there's a lot of sun because you can see there's this kind of greenish tint that's covered it and we'll be exploring that outdoors to see how much of a difference that makes in direct daylight and this is what i will be using to test indoors and outdoors sound modes there's a few options here as well i've set it to cinema it's just so i can utilize the subwoofer and those really loud speakers in built into this one thing I have noticed when I played back some videos, if I have it on just volume level 15, which is probably a quarter of the way to the max, it is very loud and it absolutely fills the entire room. I can't see any scenario where I would ever have to go to maximum 100% on the volume just to enjoy a movie, for example, which I've had to do in a lot of my previous projectors. So for me, that is very important as well. So if it packs a lot of punch with the audio, for me, that completely changes that home cinematic experience. So let's go ahead and play back some videos as a demo, and you guys will be able to hear the audio as well. I'll play an audio from Dolby Vision, and remember how you hear it and how I hear it in person will be two slightly different things. So just bear that in mind when you are viewing and listening to this video. This is Dolby Cinema. It's where the most advanced cinematic technology you've ever experienced begins. This is Dolby Atmos. The number of speakers around you no longer matters because this is the world's first object-based cinematic audio with powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Whether the soundscape system new to the scene. Whoa! What is this place? Come on, you guys, let's go! I'm 
just going to pause it there because what I want to do now is make it black out, turn off all the shutters and make sure you guys can see how clear this is when you watch it in pitch darkness. Of nature's fury. And remember this? It's just the beginning of Dolby Vision. Because what you thought was black isn't. This is black. This is contrast that reveals details deeper than any image you've seen on a screen. This is luminance that means the difference between white and pure energy. Energy that is about to reveal an entire universe of color. you've never experienced in the cinema. Okay, so as I bring some light back into the room, the audio quality still amazes me on this because even though I didn't even go anywhere near the halfway mark for the volume, it is very loud and it just packs a punch as well. The picture quality, the vibrancy, the colors, the contrast, everything in conjunction just makes this a really, really solid viewing experience as a indoor home cinema. As you guys can see from this video just playing in the background, it looks so clear and this is upscaled to 4K as well so I'm so impressed how this looks but what I do want to do as this is an outdoor projector is do take this outdoors now play another video demo and see how it comes out in broad daylight and both when the sun has gone down at night time there's some really good specifications for making this an outdoor projector which I'll also mention as well so let's go ahead and do that now okay so I've got this outdoors on a day where it's slightly drizzling and I don't know if you guys can see, but it is getting a little bit wet, but I've got it on, albeit that you might not be able to see it because it is still quite bright. But this is just a showcase that is compatible by having it outdoors when there is a little bit of drizzle. When it's heavy rain, I wouldn't recommend this or any projector to be outdoors, but just showcasing that this is made for multiple environments. So now that I've got it, in a cloudy slightly drizzly day I'm gonna switch over for it to be on a sunny day there we go nice bright sunny day today now I'm gonna be setting this up onto the wall just there on the garage of course it's very bright you're not gonna be able to see anything when it is this bright this sunny out so I'm just gonna wait for sunset and to get it a little bit darker showcase to you guys how it looks when it is around sunset dusk time and i'm going to try and get you guys some sample on how the audio sounds outdoors as well but this time i will be going very high in the volume levels just so you guys can hear how it performs outdoors when you do have maybe a little bit of wind environmental noise from the roads and things like that so let's go ahead wait till dusk and see how this performs okay so the sun has set and it's now dusk and now you can see it very visible onto my wall I'm pretty impressed to be honest it's super clear even though I don't have a screen itself the rendering on this wall is one of those sharp edged white rendering paints just look how clear that looks even though 
the wall is not completely smooth. That is just quite remarkable to be honest. Even though I can hear cars from the main road just behind my house, I can hear birds chirping, it's not so windy. This still works very well with the audio, it's super loud. I don't have the volume up at the moment, but I just want to showcase how good this looks, even if I go ahead and turn the brightness up. So currently it's at 50% brightness. Let's put this all the way to 100%. There we go. How clear does this look? To be honest, I can watch a lot of things on this without even having to wait for it to be really dark and a little bit later at night, as you guys can see. The sun set maybe just about 20 minutes ago and that's how clear it's still coming out. One thing I also wanted to mention, because I am running off of the internal battery of the GS50, if you ever want to see the remaining battery percentage, hit the projector menu button on the remote control and on the top right hand side you have your percentage so it's currently on 87% for me. So that's a very quick and easy way just to quickly see how much battery life you do have left. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to now show you a demo video when it is a lot darker. I'm going to wait about an hour or two and then show you how it sounds and how it looks when it is very dark outside. Okay, so I'm back outside and it is pitch black. I'm going to play this demo video and I'm going to put the volume up so you guys can still hear how clear it is. And I've got the brightness set to 100% as well. So let's go ahead and see how this performs. So there you have it guys, not much more else I can say. This is super bright, it's super loud and with all of the noises that you can get outdoors it makes no difference whatsoever, it feels like the audio is uninterrupted. That's how loud it was, I went up to all the way to volume 40 and that was more than enough to maybe even disturb my neighbours to be honest. So I'm quite impressed with this, really wanted to showcase how this performs as an outdoor projector and I've not found really any faults with it. It does an excellent job and anyone that's really looking for a rugged and robust projector like this which is very portable then I still think this is the one to look out for this year. Let's go ahead and head back inside. Okay so as you guys just saw this works great for an outdoor projector. I'm really impressed with the quality and the performance especially when I do host maybe summer parties to showcase videos, maybe connect my PlayStation 5 to this and play outdoors. I think it's going to be great for many different scenarios. Now I did mention earlier in the video as well, I wanted to do a bit of a comparison between this GS50 and the ViewSonic M2E. So I'm just going to pull up some data to showcase a comparison between those two projectors because the ViewSonic is the one that I've reviewed in the past being a very, very portable outdoor projector. And I just wanted to showcase to those people that are asking online, which one is the better one. Hopefully this will give you a clarification. So as you can see from the details here, I've highlighted the specs in red, whereby it's an advantage over the other one. In the cases where they're both red, then that means the specifications are exactly the same. And there are a few of those cases. As you can see on this first page, the ViewSonic is a little bit cheaper, but you'll realize very soon why the GS50 is priced a little bit higher because it does offer a lot more things as you'll see in this comparison. Now you'll see here the GS50 does benefit from having a higher anti-lumen brightness level. It's got much higher contrast ratio at 100,000 to 1. It has two 5 watt speakers plus a 10 watt subwoofer inside 
which the ViewSonic doesn't have, whereby the ViewSonic audio feels a little bit more flatter if you do a side-by-side -side comparison audio listen to both of those projectors, but the lamp life is essentially the same on both as well. One of the biggest differences with being a portable projector is the ability for the BenQ GS50 to have an internal built-in battery, whereby you wouldn't need to power it via a power bank. So that's where this internal 6,000 milliamp hour battery giving you two and a half hours of viewing time with the internal battery on the GS50 takes advantage over the ViewSonic massively. I don't need to worry about powering up my power bank and charging up the projector at the same time because then there's two devices you have to worry about. But for me personally, two and a half hours is more than enough to make sure you watch a full feature length movie or a few episodes of your TV show or have a really good gaming session with a console attached. I think that would be more than enough to get everything you want viewed outdoors. But it gives you the option via the USB-C port to input power via a power bank if you want backup power. So you do have that advantage there. Both projectors would have autofocus, auto keystone, and they do go up to a maximum projection size to 100 inches, which is what I've been showcasing you guys today with. But the BenQ GS50 does have built-in Android TV, whereby the ViewSonic doesn't have anything like that. So regardless, you would have to attach maybe a Amazon Fire Stick or an Apple TV, just another HDMI source to be able to watch all of your content. This just has everything in the box and it does feel like a box because it is in this cube shaped design. So I think it's just like an all in one solution. And then finally on this last page, both projectors do have a HDR10 support, but the GS50 does benefit from HLG support and also has Chromecast ability inbuilt into it. The only thing the ViewSonic M2E may benefit from if you watch it indoors is a lower noise decibel level from the fan noise. If you are taking this outdoors, I don't think fan noise is an issue whatsoever because you're gonna have a lot of environmental noise anyway, but the punchiness in the subwoofer and the speakers of the GS50 are so loud, if you crank it up to maybe 100 when you're watching outdoors, you're never even going to consider fan noise being an issue anywhere. To be honest, if you watch it outdoors anywhere, I don't think fan noise really matters anyway. So looking at all of those side-by-side -side specs, for me personally, the BenQ GS50 does take the winning crown on this occasion. And if you guys do have any other questions between those two projectors, then make sure to drop a comment down below. And finally, to answer the question of this video, is this the best outdoor projector still to buy in 2023? It's comparative because there's a lot of categories that suggest what is the best. Some of them may include what is the best for the budget, the price, the sound quality, best for portability or travel, and things like best for daylight and watching in the sun. So based on all of those categories, I've done a lot of research online comparing other projectors which a lot of people are claiming as the top 10, for example, for 2023. This one always comes up in the list and one thing I've seen that I've also just witnessed myself and you guys have seen in this video is I think this is best for audio and best for daylight. The fact that this is you know, quite a compact design, it has a carry case with a little handle for you to take with you. It's actually IPX2 splash proof as well. It's drop proof from 70 centimeters. So you can pretty much sure this won't get damaged in a lot of the outdoor environmental conditions you may be watching this in. I still consider this a very good, maybe the top projector to watch outdoors in 2023. That's my take. Hopefully you guys found that review useful. If you are considering buying this, then do check out the link in the description below. I'll link it to the pages where you can go ahead, read all of the full specifications and decide to purchase if you like. Any other questions around this, as always, drop a comment down below. I've got a whole bunch of projector reviews that I'll put a playlist for down below as well in case you wanna see all of the other ones I've reviewed in the past. Make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Take care.